Today at the LA Auto Show, Kia pulled the covers off of the hotly anticipated Seltos crossover. This is slotting in the lineup between the Kia Soul, which you sort of could consider a crossover, and something like the Kia Sportage, which is definitely bigger than this. The Sportage is designed as a direct RAV4 CRV competitor, whereas this is very similar in overall size to the Hyundai Kona. It does appear to be a little bit longer than that closely related Hyundai model, however. Up front, I think this is definitely the more attractive entry in the Hyundai Kia lineup. We have this more aggressive front end grille. Again, another variation on Kia's tiger nose design, which is what they call this particular shape. And as we see in some of Kia's other vehicles, but unlike Hyundai's vehicles, we have the headlamps right here where I think they belong nice and high on the vehicle. Now, these are the LED headlamps, which are available in the Seltos. And then we have the fog lamps down below. Overall, this is definitely a solid, rugged front end look. Definitely very different than what we see in the Kia Soul, and I think also a little bit more attractive than we see in the current generation Sportage. Now, in terms of overall length, this is one of those vehicles that may start straddling segments because this is theoretically a subcompact crossover, but it is a little bit longer than some of the other options out there. And in person, this definitely looks a little bit longer than I had expected it to be. That's gonna give us more rear room, which definitely appears to be generous. We'll take a look at that just in a bit, and a little bit more cargo room in the back than some of those other subcompact options. You can really see that as we move to the rear and we open this hatch that we find a cargo area back here that doesn't appear to be too far off of some of the compact crossovers out there. This cargo area isn't quite as square as what we see in the CRV or RAV4, but I suspect that the overall cargo capacity is not really going to be too far off. And for spare tire lovers out there, we do find a donut spare tire under there and a two-stage load floor that makes this cargo area even deeper. Out back, we have a slightly different and more aggressive design than we see in the rest of the Kia lineup. This model does look like it has combination LED tail lamps. Then we have this interesting satin bar right there across from one side to the other. An interesting touch with the Seltos that I didn't quite expect is that Kia is going for a slightly more aggressive, more off-road capable entry than some of the other compact crossovers or subcompact crossovers out there. We get 7.2 inches of ground clearance in here, which is definitely above the average in the subcompact category. And this all-wheel drive system has the ability to fully lock the center coupling. Also a little bit unexpected and not very common in this particular group. So this is definitely going to be more off-road capable than some of those very close to the ground entries or of course some of the entries like the Nissan Kicks or the Toyota CHR that aren't available with all-wheel drive at all. Under the hood, we find two different engines at launch. There's a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that produces 146 horsepower. It's mated to a continuously variable automatic transmission. So if you're not a fan of CVTs, you may want to upgrade into this engine right here. It's a 1.6 liter turbo. This gets Kia's latest seven speed dual clutch transmission that we've seen in a few other vehicles in their lineup. This gives you 175 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. So it's not the most powerful version of this 1.6. Unlike the Kia Soul, but very much like the Sportage, all-wheel drive will be available in the Seltos, and that's going to be one of the big differentiators between this and something like a Nissan Kicks or, of course, the Kia Soul. In an interesting twist, if you check the all-wheel drive option box, we get a fully independent rear suspension, which should definitely improve the overall handling abilities of this versus the front-wheel drive model. Overall front seat comfort appears to be pretty good. This is the very top end trim SX model. Unfortunately, they haven't shown us what the actual base models look like just yet, but we do have a multi-way adjustable driver's seat with a two-way adjustable lumbar support, a really nice touch in this particular segment. A lot of folks get away without lumbar support at all. And we have a tilt telescopic steering column. Now, again, this is the very top end trim, so you aren't gonna see all of these features in the base model. Overall rear seat room appears to be pretty generous. Sitting right there behind myself, I have several inches of leg room left. I think in terms of overall interior dimensions, this is a little bit more like the Jeep Compass and a little bit less like the Jeep Renegade. The Jeep Compass is also sort of a tweener vehicle that slots between a lot of subcompacts at the bottom and the average compact crossover in America. I definitely have a decent amount of headroom thanks to this very square roof line. I have about an inch and a half of overall headroom left. In a little bit of a surprise, these rear seats have a two-stage recline mechanism to them, and the most upright stage is not terribly upright, so I think both are very usable. Now, this is not quite as wide as some of the compact crossovers out there, so if you do plan on putting three folks across the rear, know that you will find a little bit more room in something like the Sportage, the RAV4, or the CRV. Bearing in mind that this is a direct competitor to something like the Honda HRV as well as the Jeep Compass, overall interior parts quality appears to be very high. This is the very top end trim, so you're gonna find things in here again that we don't find in the base model, but we do have a leather wrapped steering wheel. This does have a button for the Kia Highway Driving Assistant, which is their more aggressive lane assist feature. That was an interesting touch I didn't expect. You will still find some hard plastics on top of the dash like this binnacle over the instrument cluster. But other than that, the rest of the parts in this interior appear to be very high quality, especially this large touchscreen 
touchscreen infotainment system right here in the dashboard. This was a little bit unexpected. Now you'll only find this in the very top end trim, but all versions of the Seltos will get at least an eight inch touchscreen. That's definitely large for this category. Regardless of which screen you get, all versions will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Standard. As we move down the dashboard, we find some soft touch materials. This section of the dashboard appears to be a soft touch plastic. The upper sections are definitely hard, just as you'd expect in an inexpensive vehicle. We have a single zone automatic climate control, a drive mode knob right over here next to the shifter. Ventilated seats are available, a very rare touch in this particular segment, as is this lock button right here, because this will get a variant of the same all wheel drive system that we see in a number of other Hyundai and Kia vehicles. This includes a full lock functionality for the center coupling and software to help distribute the power left and right in the vehicle. We still find a single USB input right there in the center, but we do have a Qi wireless charging mat. Moving over to the front door panels, again, we do find hard plastics at the top, just as you'd expect in an inexpensive vehicle, but a decent amount of soft touch plastics right where your elbows will meet the door. An interesting touch is that we have a Bose audio system in here. That was a little bit unexpected. This is the first Bose audio system that Kia has ever put into a vehicle. At this point in time, we don't have an exact on-sale date for the Seltos, but expect this to be on dealer lots sometime in early 2020. Hopefully, I'll be driving this pretty soon. A really good sign is that we do know general base pricing. We're told to expect this to start under $22,000, so perhaps $21,900, we don't know exactly. But you can bet this is definitely gonna be right in line with the bulk of the competition, from the HRV to the CHR and even the related Hyundai Kona. As we come around the vehicle, one of the things that I really like about this design is its overall practicality. Something I've also noted in the all new Kia Telluride, and that is this really flat roof line right here. I really appreciate that they're doing this in the Kia Soul, this Seltos and of course the Telluride and that really improves overall cargo practicality and rear seat room. This cargo area is definitely a lot more square than we see in the Hyundai Kona. That's certainly gonna make it a bit more practical. It also helps this vehicle look a little bit bigger and a little bit more imposing than it otherwise would. Again, in photos, I assume this would be a lot smaller in person, but looking at this out here at the LA Auto Show, it definitely appears to be a little bit larger than some of those other options, but still gonna be incredible value. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen because I will have a complete video on this just as soon as I can get my hands on it. Again, expect that in early 2020. Until then, hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen and I'll see you later.